Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This is a ViewSonic VX900, a 19-inch monitor that I have with the Optiplex, uh, what is it, Optiplex 745 that I found uh, out on the curb, so we put it out in the trash. But uh, I purchased this monitor, I think, back in 2003, and I purchased two of them. And at the time, I couldn't believe I was walking out of the store with two monitors uh, in my hands. When at the time I had a 19 inch uh, Dell monitor and uh, definitely was over 50 pounds. But uh, that was when this was pretty new and most of us still had the old tube monitors. I remember I had, it was like two feet away from, had to be two feet away from the wall on the desk, uh, the old Dell monitor. Anyways, uh, I repaired this one four years ago because it just went out. So one of them I had on all the time, another one you know I, I didn't have on as frequently and uh, replaced it. Once the first one went I replaced it with the second one that was working and then that one finally died. So I did some research online and found this obscure forum that was talking about the inverter boards and uh, maybe bad electrolytic capacitors uh, on the inverter boards that power the, um, what are they, i got to learn the terminology all over again here, the uh, cold cathode uh, fluorescent lights, uh, CCFLs, and uh, never had any problem with, I know there's a lot of uh, videos on replacing the, uh, the CCFLs on laptops, but what happened when I would turn on the power the screen would flash for a second so I had video and it seemed like it was kind of bright but then it would just go out so um, I took it apart um, with the prospect of changing a bunch of uh, electrolytics it turned out that wasn't the case uh, at first I couldn't figure out I, was, I thought it was over my head and then I saw two fuse designations on the inverter board and uh, measured them and one was open so I found the part number, I found a, a replacement on DigiKey, ordered that and replaced it and this monitor has been working ever since. So you see when I first turn this on it'll flash and you can see this video but then it goes out and then it goes out and if you turn it off and it repeats. So that's exactly what the, the first one was doing before I repaired it by changing one of the fuses on the inverter board. So let me go ahead take this one apart and start the repair. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the stand. A couple of screws here. So after that it's uh, kind of a mystery but if you look in these vents you'll see some tabs that you need to press in and I think yeah the first thing is this bottom plate here that covers over the speakers that uh, is the first thing that comes off to reveal some more screws that hold the LCD display to this front basil here so I can figure out again how to press those in so I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's see right there. You need to press that tab in. Okay, I'm always sweating when I do this. I think I'm going to crack something. But if you get the two end tabs out, don't try to... There's another one in the middle here, but these are all solid. There's no venting here. So what you do it makes you think that you need to get in here but what you do is you start lifting it up from the top edge here and I think that's how you work that out okay a little finesse and finally came out without anything breaking you can see some type of tab that goes on there Anyways, we got that panel off. Excellent. Just have to undo this connector. So once that front panel's off, it reveals two screws here. 
and here. But then there are tabs all around the frame that I use this uh, the putty knives to. And there's a little some type of tape or uh, epoxy, a little bit of epoxy or sealant. So you have to be careful if you don't want to end up breaking any of this plastic. Okay, so I'm starting at the top here. I pressed the tabs in through these vent holes and I started to loosen this basil there. What did it snap back in just now? But that's where I'm starting from the top here. Yeah, you just have to work it with the putty knife. Pull those tabs, push those tabs in at the top. Oh, <laughs> and make sure it doesn't snap back in. And finesse it. It looks like this. Even though there's this much off, uh, that other side is stuck somehow. So let me put the putty knife along the seam. Okay, so I got that off without cracking anything. You can see these little tabs here. And then along the side. And along the side here. Just have to finesse it. And there's all nubs here that they clip into. So now I can take this out. There's two more screws here or four more screws. Oh, there's more here along the edge. So this comes out. A couple of cables I gotta disconnect going to speakers, so this gets disconnected. And this one. Easily said, more easier said than done. Let me take those apart. You don't want to pull the wires, so try to separate the two plastic connectors. Put pressure there, that was easy. Just use the flat blade of a screwdriver. And there's the next one. Okay, so, and everything's connected to this. So let me move this plastic, the back cover here, off the table. Now this is looking familiar. So, here's the back. I know exactly where to go now. Don't even have to think about that cover. And there's one screw. Let me put the handle on. Remove that tape. And expose the inverter board. So that's the screw and there's the tape. Slide this cover down. There's the inverter board. Wow. That's that screws loose. I think what I'll do is use a marker. Is one dot and one dot, two dots and two dots. I can always use the the memory of the wire here. Figure out what's going where, but this would be safer. That's two. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then nothing on the last one there. We'll identify that. Okay, so here's the inverter board. 
So you can see here, there's a fuse one and a fuse two. And just like the first one, this fuse here, F1, is open. And this one here is shorted. So again, I don't know if they just uh, engineered this really tight tolerances and the cathode, cold cathode uh, fluorescent lighting. Uh, those tubes draw more current as they get older or something and it's just these fuses are just uh, too tight tolerance here they're pulling in exactly just over the amount of current that they can that blows them or but anyways that's the exact same fuse so I'm gonna go ahead and replace it and it should fix it so you can see here this fuse F1 that should be a short and then this is F2 so this one here needs to be replaced so here are the parts that I purchased from DigiKey you can see here it's a 2 amp 63 volt fast fuse <laughs> you can see here I ordered these parts in 2012 so let me heat up the soldering iron and replace that fuse. So you can see here it's a pretty small part. So you have to have a good magnifier to be able to solder that onto the board or good eyes. And this is the magnifier I'll be using. So I have to try and use some solder wick. Just gonna get in there without lifting that pad. Sometimes you have to add solder to get rid of solder. So you can see there there's the old fuse. Cleaned up the pads as best I could. I just have to put the new fuse down. So the green one is the new fuse. This is the old one. So I just need to solder this fuse. Let me put it, uh, let me put the camera down for a second. So I've got it in place. I just need to solder it right there. There's one side. Maybe a little bit too much on that last one, but looks like it's soldered in. Let's measure it. So this one right here should be a short. And it is. Just like this one. So it's all set. Now you might ask why not go ahead and replace this one. Well it hasn't blown yet. Uh, and um, the other one, I think I only changed the one and it's been good now for four years. So let me go put this all back together. 
So now I can put the inverter board back, plug these in. And the cover. And the LCD panel just goes back into the case with a shell like so. And now I just need to put this plastic basil on or trim, whatever this is called. See if it snaps back in place. And this just snaps in. Just need to put the base on. And the base is on. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. Turn on the computer. Oh, turn on the power. I see starting windows. Success. So, only took me four years. So I've got another monitor, another 19 inch monitor. There we go. So I wonder how many of these ended up in the landfill. All they needed was a new fuse. So I hope you found this video interesting. Feel free to subscribe, like, and or comment. And thanks for watching.